Film photography was a bit of a coming home moment for me. You know what, I really love film. Um, I really do love film. That shutter, I just love the sound of an analog shutter. Um, I'm trying to bring it into areas where I'm using digital, uh, replace it with analog. Every picture tells a story. There are exciting stories, there are funny stories, there are also sad stories, but it doesn't really matter. And in my opinion, the best storyteller of them all is the picture taken on film. Now, that might be a complete exaggeration, but that's the way I feel. I started taking pictures when I was six years old. The, the camera I used back then was this Canon XS version 3 and I couldn't stop taking pictures. Everything I saw was being documented and I could instantly see if I liked the picture or if I maybe have to take another one. That was my reality for 10 years and, and then I decided to give film photography a shot. And I don't really know what it was, but something about these pictures made me feel like I've never felt about any other picture I've taken before. So that's it, I was and am still hooked. But I never really figured out why I like to spend my money on film developing and scanning to get 36 pictures of which, let's be honest, only 10 really come out the way you want them to be. So I got in touch with a few friends from all over the globe who also shoot film and I wanted to know if they started out taking pictures digitally or analog, what, what their first camera was and how it felt, what their feelings are towards film photography, what other things they like about it and what other things they maybe don't like about it and maybe if they even have a preference. So, first question, have you started out taking pictures digitally or on film? I started on film when I was really young because digital cameras didn't exist when I was a kid. Um, but I wasn't really into photography, so I'm going to skip that and I'm going to move to my first proper camera. And my first proper camera is actually this. This is a Pentax P30. I got this when digital cameras were already out, but someone told me, learn to shoot on an SLR, a film SLR, where every shot costs you money, um, and you, you'll learn a lot better, especially if you don't have a full automatic control. So I taught myself how to shoot in manual with this camera here, and it still works. I started out shooting digitally. Um, and then picked up a few film cameras along the way. I started out shooting on film. I had a little brown point and shoot. My parents had two of them actually. One that we used around the family and one that I would usually use. So I picked up like this chin on um, and some little toy cameras. So I've got a plastic Holger and I've got a Lomography fisheye um, and yeah and some just little point and shoot 35mm film cameras and I absolutely love them. Even though it wasn't a really a good camera I still managed to take some decent pictures on it because I was just taking so many pictures. I used to annoy all my friends with pictures of them and there were several of my friends who would just react like this to any sort of attempt of me taking a picture. So I started out with photography in 2012 on a Canon T1 DSLR. I borrowed it from my dad for an extended period of time and proceeded to take some really terrible photos with it. I started taking pictures about three years ago, I'd say, when my girlfriend got a DSLR. Um, so I started kind of messing around with it and found that I really, really liked it and decided I wanted to buy uh, my own digital camera. But before that, uh, I was working at a thrift store at the time and I actually found a 35 millimeter film camera and bought that and shot a couple rolls of Tri-X on it and really loved it. So uh, the Canon A1 program that I bought at the thrift store is actually my first camera that I ever owned that was my own. Then decided to buy my first DSLR, a Canon T3i. Even though it was a couple years old and I could only afford kit lenses, I took it everywhere with me. I continued to take really awful photos with that camera, but I was in love and I kept at it. It wasn't until about a year and a half ago that I took any interest in film photography. I got an old Minolta Maxim 7000 and a 50mm lens. 
I acquired a roll of 400 ISO Kodak black and white film, and I shot my first roll. You know what? I really love film. Um, I really do love film, and I love shooting on like these little toy cameras just for fun, like just for family stuff. I never really know what you're gonna get out of it. I spent about 10 years shooting digital images from when I was 16 until I was about 26, 27, I don't know. Didn't really take long for me to get frustrated with the digital colours. I like to use a lot of expired films and out of date stuff and experimental films. I think the reason I love it so much is because I never really know what I'm going to get or how the pictures are going to turn out. Film photography was a bit of a coming home moment for me because that's what I started with. So for me the colours just seemed better, even though I wasn't really shooting much colour at the beginning. It gave me a sense of taking back control from the machines, in a way. It's a weird thing to say. I actually think, if I'm honest, I nearly prefer... Uh, well, what I prefer is actually the mechanics and the aesthetics of using film cameras. There's just something really nice about like picking up the camera and physically winding and feeling and hearing the film stretch out of the out of the cartridge and go around the, the sprockets and then that that shutter. I just love the sound of an analog shutter. But you know, after now having done it as a job, it feels a little bit more like work to pick up my digital camera. So I decided I really should try analog again. So I kind of jumped in head first. Uh, about a year ago, I'd say I learned how to develop black and white, then I learned how to develop C41 color, and then now recently I learned how to develop slide film. And so I've really, uh, really enjoyed the learning process uh, with film, and it's really kind of kept me creative and kept me motivated, I would say, which has been a really amazing thing. I think the best part about that was that I was very careful and precise with each shot that I took. It really made me think about composition and the story behind each shot. I learned how to slow down and make sure I press that shutter at just the right time. One thing I found that I like the most about film is how much uh, it's dependent on you and how you do your process, you know. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with development and a lot of different things with shooting, but at the end of the day, if something gets messed up, it's your fault. You can only hold yourself accountable. And I think that really makes you a little bit more of a precise creator and a little bit more thoughtful. I still enjoy it occasionally. It's purely about taking the photo instead of all the post-processing that comes with digital. Plus, I actually print the photos out and keep them. It can make you feel that you're a better photographer, even though that's not always the case. It's just that you have more control over the situation, and that alone is already a very interesting feeling. But I would never look down on someone who shoots only digital. I would never use film photography for work because uh, it's because of how slow that process is and the fact that um, when you're using something commercially, you can't afford to make mistakes. I've definitely embraced analog photography recently, uh, a little bit more so. Um, I'm trying to bring it into areas where I'm using digital, uh, replace it with analog. That's kind of my goal in a lot of areas like concert photography, portraiture, things like that. And it's definitely been a challenge, but I think it's made me a lot more precise of a creator. And I've become a lot more thoughtful about the things that I've been doing for a while. And even if I am shooting digital, I think I really still bring the analog mindset to it. And all around, I've just become a better creative because of it. Well, as a professional, there's absolutely no way that I would take any of these to a wedding and shoot a wedding on them. Um, it, it has to be digital. What they're not like, cost and time, it's expensive and you have to wait quite a long time uh, to get your, your shots back. The only thing I don't like about film photography is dust. It really is the bane of my existence. It gets introduced when developing, when scanning, and then you just spend hours trying to get rid of it. I think one thing that's not so great about analog photography is that it's a bit cost prohibitive. You know, if you have a digital camera, you just keep shooting and not have to worry about the cost. Whereas with film, you know, you have to worry about buying more film every time you want to go shoot. And you have to worry about, you know, either buying developing chemicals or pain to get your film developed and that's also very costly so I think that's one thing that's tough. I think I definitely prefer digital because there's way more creative flexibility and in the long run it'll end up being much more cost effective for me. For me there just has to be a little bit of grain and the colors have to be film and then it looks right to me. 
otherwise there's just something missing it's not really a very a very objective thing that you can say it's this or that that makes the difference it's a uh, an analog thing, like the crackle on a vinyl or some such thing. Something that grounds you to a more material world, I guess, and not just zeros and ones. Some people say that film looks better. I would quite strongly dispute that. I think there is that you can get better resolution from digital cameras and any look that you can get with film, you can generally emulate if you shoot raw on digital. So for me, the, the only real benefits of shooting film today are simply to embrace that discipline uh, and, just, and, and get that wave of nostalgia for a more analog and perhaps a better time. <laughs> Uh, I know the purpose of this video might be to promote film, but I would, it's digital for me. Digital all the way, and it's because it's so much cheaper, it's so much easier to use. You've got your preview in the screen, um, and cameras today, there's just so much more you can do with digital. It's just another tool, and if that makes you take the best pictures that you can take, then that's perfectly fine. Automatic exposure is perfectly fine. Auto focus perfectly fine if that's your jam. It's just for me, it doesn't really work. I can't really work that way. I guess the point I'm trying to prove or rather to legitimize is that you can get hooked on film. And even in this day and age of everything being digitally, film photography still has its rightful place and lovers all around the world. And to finish this video, I'm going to try a little experiment. I took to another photographer friend who up until this point has only shot digitally and try to get him hooked on analog film. Ich bin Maris, ich bin 19 Jahre alt, mache eine Ausbildung als Mediengestalter und äh, beschäftige mich jetzt seit fast zwei Jahren mit der Fotografie. Ähm, meine Erwartungen sind vor allem erstmal, dass man ähm, vor allem mehr über Shots nachdenkt, auf das Framing, den Fokus und sich schon mal überlegt, wie das Bild aussieht und dass man einfach mehr darauf achtet und somit halt auch ähm, was lernt später für die Digitalfotografie oder sogar fürs Film. Mach die Kamera mal so nach da rum, so hoch. Schon, schon nice. Schon gut. Was funktioniert an sich in einem? Das ist halt schon ganz anders, wie man guckt. Und ich habe so das Gefühl, ich finde öfter irgendwie jetzt so Stills gerade. Ich unten, den Knopf. unten den Knopf, genau. Ja. Der bleibt eingerastet. Jetzt nimmst du, da machst du die Klappe hoch. Mhm. Jetzt ist dann Pfeil und jetzt ruderst du einfach mit dem in die Richtung vom Pfeil. Und jetzt merkst du eigentlich schon, dass da ein bisschen Spannung drauf ist, oder? Ja. Jetzt solltest du dann gleich irgendwann merken, dass es extrem leichter geht. Ja, jetzt. Genau. Und jetzt klappst du das Ding wieder ein, ziehst es hoch und betest zu Gott. Jawohl. Hast du deinen ersten... Meinen ersten Film gemacht. Es hat schon auf jeden Fall sehr viel Spaß gemacht. Ähm, ich fand das Fokussieren doch schon... Also da hatte ich am Anfang sehr viel immer Angst vor, weil ich halt mir nicht vorstellen konnte, wie man jetzt mit so einem Prisma fokussiert. Aber das ist schon relativ einfach, wenn man auf, auf gerade Linien achtet, die sich dann halt in einem Bild halt überschneiden. Und äh, wenn man halt die Schritte so ja, nachgeht, also man belichtet richtig, man guckt, dass der Framing sitzt, guckt, dass der Fokus sitzt und dann abdrückt, 
dann dauert das zwar länger, aber man, man guckt doch schon ein bisschen intensiver, was man für Bilder macht. Vor allem, weil es halt eben auch nur 24 Bilder sind und man halt vorher oder später sie sich nicht angucken kann, sondern halt erst entwickeln und Abzüge braucht, bevor man weiß, ob das was geworden ist, was man sich dabei gedacht hat. Und das macht auch dann irgendwie den Reiz aus mit Analogfotografie und da habe ich auf jeden Fall Bock, noch weiter damit zu fotografieren und äh, was dabei zu lernen. I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all the people who decided to help me with this project. I couldn't have done it alone. Um, I got so many great responses from all the people who were um, okay with me basically interviewing them and also had so much fun with Marius at the end, taking him on his first analog photography adventure. I really, really hope you enjoyed the video. This is probably the video I put the most effort in through all my YouTube career. If you liked it, please consider subscribing, liking the video and maybe commenting have you ever tried analog photography before or are you maybe willing to try it and, and I hope to see you in the next video.